بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد Brothers and sisters, the month of Ramadan brings to each one of us a whole host of opportunities. From amongst those opportunities, the greatest opportunity, especially in the month of Ramadan, is for me and you to attain the closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that will only happen when we are able to demolish and destroy many bad qualities and characteristics that many of us have. Let us not forget the month of Ramadan is the month of discipline. Not only do we abstain from food and drink, from sunrise uh, to sunset, from dawn to dusk, but this is also an opportunity for us to control our tongue, especially in the month of Ramadan, because if we're not able to control our tongue and we misuse our tongue in such a way that we uh, are causing harm to others, we misuse our tongue to the point that we offend someone, we use language that is inappropriate, then let us not forget that our fasting will not be accepted. We don't want to experience the month of Ramadan in such a way that we have entered the month of Ramadan. And by the time we leave the month of Ramadan, we leave with the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is surely the month where we should really exhaust our effort, our energy, so that we can attain the closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't want to uh, destroy that opportunity. So let us uh, demolish and destroy our bad habits, especially the misuse of our tongue. So the month of Ramadan is an opportunity to tame our tongue, discipline our tongue, and control our tongue. The Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in one of his profound narrations, he tells us, مَن لَمْ يَدَعْ قَوْلَ زُورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةٌ فِي أَنْ يَدَعْ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ The person who does not abstain from ill speech and ill behavior, immoral speech and immoral actions, then remember Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need for that person to abstain from food and drink from dawn to uh, from uh, sunrise to sunset. Allah is not in need of uh, me and you to abstain from food and drink. In the process of Ramadan and during the time that we fast, this is uh, an opportunity for us to discipline ourselves and the benefit is for ourselves. So as we experience the month of Ramadan, brothers and sisters, just the way we control our consumption of food, we have to control a very soft part of our body, and that is our tongue. Or we will leave the month of Ramadan in such a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with us. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in another narration, he says, لَيْسَ مِنْ صِيَامِهِ إِلَّا الْجُوءُ وَالْعَطَشِ there are many people who will fast in the month of Ramadan and they will not attain anything by abstaining from food and drink except hunger and thirst. We don't want to be amongst those people. Who are those people? People who abstain from food and drink, but they don't control their tongue. They don't tame their tongue. They find themselves speaking ill of others, swearing at others, cursing others, backbiting others. May Allah Jalla wa ala protect each one of us. If we ask ourselves the question, brothers and sisters, what is the purpose of our tongue? Why has Allah giving, given us our tongue? Then the answer is in the Quran. Allah Jalla wa ala, He has given us this very soft part of our body and He has also informed us what the purpose behind this uh, very tongue is and why He has given this tongue to each one of us. Allah says, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna. And when you speak to others, Make sure you speak with kindness, make sure you speak with love, make sure you speak with compassion. And this is the very purpose that Allah has given us our tongue. Unfortunately, many of us, we use our tongue as a weapon. And let us not forget, words can have an impact on others. If you use your tongue appropriately, then surely this will uh, bring about love and compassion uh, between you and the people that are around you. And if you don't use your tongue properly, then this can uh, cause uh, damage, not only to yourself, but to others, your relationship with others, so on and so forth. And most importantly, your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the companions, he came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, ayyul a'mali afdal. O Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is the greatest deed? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, أن تفارق الدنيا ولسانك رطب من ذكر الله عز وجل 
that you depart from this temporary place of abode in such a way that your tongue is busy in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does this hadith tell us? That the function of this tongue should be that it is used for that which will uh, build our relationship with Allah, strengthen our relationship with Allah, make us successful in the hereafter. Because this very tongue would be the reason many people are successful in the hereafter. And on the contrary, it will be the reason that many people are in great loss in the hereafter. Because our tongue will be a witness against us on the day of Hisab. That today you have the freedom to say what you want. You have the freedom to do what you want. It's your choice. But on the day of Hisab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yawma tashhadu, That on that day, your tongue, your hands, your legs, your limbs will testify against you. Allahu Akbar. So before we stand before Allah, we want to ensure that we discipline our limbs, especially our tongue, because too often we uh, use our tongue in a way that is inappropriate. Brothers and sisters, take a moment and think how often we have said something and the day after we have regretted that very statement that we have said while speaking to someone. This could be your friend, this could be a family member, this could be your colleague, it could be a relative, that you've said something to that person but the next day you've regretted that speech. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَلَا تَكَلَّمَ بِكَلَامٍ تَعْتَذِرُوا مِنْهُ غَدًا And do not say something that you will regret tomorrow. Subhanallah bihamdi. How often we have found ourselves in that situation that I said something to someone and that I went home and I deeply thought about it that my words were inappropriate. I should not have said that to that person in their presence. We don't want to be in that situation. When we speak, we want to be very careful. Our choice of words, we've got to be very careful that we don't harm someone, we don't hurt someone with our words in their presence and in their absence. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, I have never ever regretted my silence, but as for my speech, I have regretted it on numerous occasions, subhanallah, that when we are silent, and we're not speaking to anybody, we're not going to say something that's inappropriate, we're not going to harm someone, we're not going to hurt someone. But the moment we speak, if we're not careful and we don't control our tongue, if we don't discipline our tongue, if we don't tame our tongue, then we may say things to other people that will hurt them and that will harm them. So we've got to be very careful. So Amr ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he says, I've never ever regretted my silence. As for my speech, I have regretted it on many, many occasions. Brothers and sisters, if we want the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we've got to ensure that we're using our tongue for the very reason that Allah jalla wa ala has given us our tongue, especially in the month of Ramadan. This is a month where we should train ourselves, make ourselves a better person. We want progression, we want development within our life, and that will only occur when we take those steps, when we employ those steps within our lives. So let us make a proactive effort to control and discipline our tongue so that we don't demolish and destroy our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't destroy our opportunity to attain Jannah. We don't de destroy our opportunity to uh, attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the month of Ramadan, just the way we abstain from food and drink, we have to abstain from speaking ill of other people in their absence and in their presence. Unfortunately, backbiting has become such a norm that it is secondhand now. It is not something that people, it is a norm that people don't even realize that they're backbiting. May Allah Jalla wa ala protect us. Now that we have our mobile phones, we speak ill of each other on WhatsApp. We speak ill of one another on Facebook. We speak ill of one another on Instagram. We're very quick to comment. We're very quick to make uh, a, a comment about somebody without having the knowledge of that person. And if that person doesn't forgive me, if I've wronged them, then on the day of judgment, I'm not going to Jannah unless that person forgives me. So may Allah Jalla wa ala protect us. I've got to be very careful before I make a comment about somebody, before I speak about somebody, that if that person was hearing this, would they be happy or would they be upset? That's a question that I need to ask myself. And this is why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he preferred 
that we speak less. And in a hadith, he says that if you have nothing good to say, then speak less. And when you speak, speak that which is good, that will benefit you, that will be beneficial to others. You may ask the question that we're speaking about the importance of taming our tongue, controlling our tongue, disciplining our tongue. Then what are the guidelines? Can we give some tips how to control our tongue, how to discipline our tongue? Brothers and sisters, before I speak, I need to ask myself the question that every time I speak, which side is it going to my speech, my right side or my left side? Is it going to my weighing scale of goodness? Or is it going to be that when I speak, what side of the scale is it going to? Is it going to my good deeds or is it going to my bad deeds? The moment you can criticize yourself like this, self-criticism, then inshallah you'll be able to uh, discipline yourself, control yourself when you speak. You want to ask yourself that important question before you speak. Is my speech beneficial? When I speak, is Allah going to be pleased with my speech? And what side of my shoulder is this speech going to? Is it going to the good side? Or is it going to be a, me, a reason for my uh, loss in the hereafter? That's something that we need to ask ourselves. And when we speak, brothers and sisters, let us ensure that we spend less time talking, more time listening. And this is why the Arabs, they used to say, you see, speech is like medicine. A small amount is good for you and an excessive amount is bad for you. If the doctor says to you that you have an illness and you are supposed to take only two tablets, but you decide to take more than two, what will happen? You're going to cause more physical harm. So you're only supposed to be taking the amount that the doctor has prescribed for you. Likewise, speech is such that if you speak too much, that will be the reason for your downfall, destruction. Speak less. And when you speak, speak that which will benefit you and benefit others around you. That when you depart from the life of this world in the hereafter, when your right, a book is given to you on your right hand, mashallah, the very speech that you uh, the, the very uh, words that came out of your mouth were the reason that Allah Jalla has forgiven you in the hereafter or the very speech that you uh, or the, the, the words that you, you uh, uttered or the words that came out of your mouth was the very reason that Allah Jalla gave you salvation in the hereafter. Brothers and sisters, speaking ill of others, speaking ill of others in their absence, swearing, slandering, cursing and uh, doubting others, this is all impermissible. This is all unlawful. Allah Jalla says in the Quran, وَلَا بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا And do not speak ill of one another in their absence. أَيُحِبُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيْتًا فَكَرِهْتُمُوهُ Allah Jalla says, would one of you desire to eat the flesh of his fellow brother? Absolutely not. We would never do that. But Allah Jalla compares al ghibatu backbiting to the consumption of the flesh of a human being. Subhanallah, bihamdi. Take a moment and think about that. And Allah Jalla wa ala, He has made it prohibited, especially in the Quran, in Surah Al Hujurat, which is the 49th Surah of the Quran. There are nine prohibitions in this very Surah, and from amongst them, one of the prohibitions is Wala yaghta ba'dukum ba'da. And do not backbite. Do not speak ill of one another in one another's absence. But as a Muslim, we make dua for one another in, our, in, in, in the absence of one another. We speak good of one another in, in the absence of one another. But we don't speak ill of one another. That cannot be the quality of a person who believes in Allah and he follows the way of the best of creation, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and a person who desires to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That cannot be the quality of a believer that they speak ill of another person in their absence. The Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon occasion, he says to his companions, Atadruna mal ghiba, do you know what backbiting is? And then the companions, they, they said, Ya Rasulullah, inform us, tell us what backbiting is. And he says, 
to speak ill of your brother or your sister, that if they were to hear this, they would be very displeased. Or you speak about a quality or a characteristic of that person that is very disliked. And when they hear that, they become very displeased. This is what ghiba is. Brothers and sisters, may Allah Jalla protect us. And through our ghiba, our good deeds are destroyed. Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi, he says, إِنَّ الْعَبْدَ لَيَأْتِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ بِحَسَنَاتٍ أَمْثَالِ الْجِبَالِ That a man will come before Allah on the day of Hisab with deeds equivalent to mountains. You gave sadaqa in the life of this world. And you read the Qur'an, MashaAllah, every day. And you performed voluntary prayers. And you gave zakah. And you fasted in the month of Ramadan. And you went to Hajj. And you did Umrah. And you was dutiful to your parents. You was kind to your relatives. And you was doing lots of social work. MashaAllah. All of this goodness will be translated. Or it will be turned into mountains of thawab in the hereafter. Hafiz ibn al-Qayyim, rahmatullahi alayhi, he says, إن العبد ليأتي يوم القيامة بحسنات أمثال الجبال On the day of Hisab, all of those good deeds will be presented to each one of us. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَمَا تُقَدِّمُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ تَجِدُوهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Whatever good you do in the life of this world, remember, you will see all of that in the hereafter. Imam Ibn al-Qayyim says, we will do all of these good deeds and it will be visible to us on the day of Hisab. فَيَجِدُ However, he will find that his tongue has destroyed and demolished all of those good deeds. نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ May Allah protect us. That we did all of those things, but on the day of Hisab, all of that is destroyed. Why? Because of our tongue. SubhanAllah. Take a moment and think about that. That Allah gave me this tongue to attain his pleasure. This tongue could be the very reason I go to Jannah. But if I don't use this tongue accordingly and appropriately, brothers and sisters, this tongue will take me to Jahannam. May Allah protect each one of us, especially in the month of Ramadan. This is the month of discipline. This is the month to tame and control our tongue. So the rest of the year, I'm using my tongue appropriately for the very purpose that Allah Jalla has given me this tongue. Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim, what did he say? That you may do so much good deeds, enough to take you to Jannah, but because you spoke ill of others, because you spoke bad about others, all of those good deeds will be destroyed and on the day of Hisab, you will be in a state of regret. Brothers and sisters, when a person violates the right of Allah and they sin and they commit an action that is immoral and indecent, and they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives that person. إِنَّ الْعَبْدَ إِذَا اَعْتَرَفَ ثُمَّ تَابَ تَابَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ When a person has i'tiraf, they acknowledge that they have done wrong, and they come back to Allah. ثُمَّ تَابَ They physically come back to Allah. تَابَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ Allah accepts that coming back, because Allah loves to forgive, and Allah is oft forgiving. So if you violate the haqq of Allah, haqq Allah, then Allah will forgive you when you ask him for forgiveness. But when you violate the haqq of the ibad, the creation, hukukul ibad, then on the day of hisab, you will have to repay that person back. And you'll only be repaying that person back with your good deeds. A person will cross the sirat on the day of hisab. And this is a bridge under which is Jahannam. And many people will run through this bridge like a lightning. Many people will crawl. But then there will be another bridge, and that bridge is known as Qantara. And on that bridge, it is where people will have to pay back uh, to others that they have spoken ill of, they have back, uh, that they backbited about somebody else. And on that day, you will have to pay that person back. And the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Atadruna mal muflis? Do you know who the bankrupt is? The person who has lost everything and muflis it has a relationship with the word iflas, which means a person in financial crisis, azma maliya, a person in such a state. Do you know who that person is? They said, Ya Rasulullah, the one who doesn't have wealth. The Prophet ﷺ said, I'm not talking about that person. I'm speaking about a person who has wealth. They have enough to take them to Jannah as well. But on the day of Hisab, all of their good deeds will be taken away from them. And it will be given to the person that they have wronged. And it doesn't finish there. 
the person that they have wronged, that person's sin will be given to that person. May Allah Jalla wa ala protect us. May Allah give us the tawfiq to control this soft part of our tongue. Let us use it to create love. Let us use it to strengthen our relationship with Allah. Let us use it to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us use it to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us use our tongue to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us use our tongue to continuously remember the oneness of Allah Jalla wa ala. Let us use our tongue to send salutation upon the best of creation, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. May Allah protect each one of us, dearest brothers and sisters. May Allah keep you all well. Until our next program, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.